everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be setting up a multi shell dweller tank. So we start off with just a standard 10 gallon aquarium you can get pretty much anywhere. I had this one laying around. This used to be my uh, crab aquarium, some of you guys might remember that setup. I just had it laying around, I didn't have anything to do with it, so I decided to t turn this into a shell dweller tank. We'll get more into that later, of course. To get this started, because there isn't going to be really any big hardscape in this tank, just going to be shells on sand, I want to give a little bit of interest in here, so I decided to rock up one of the sides of the tank. And this is basically just, I took standard GE silicone 1 and siliconed basalt rocks that I collected outside to the back of the tank, and then sprinkled in some smaller grain-sized rock, just in between the cracks to make a really nice rock ledge look across the back of the tank, just to give this a little more natural feel and to add a little bit of hardscape to the setup. When it came to products I was using for this setup, I got everything off of Amazon, and you guys have seen the unboxing for the shells, the pump, and the sand already, but I recently just got my last package I need with the lighting and the sponge filter, so let's crack that open and we can get to setting up this tank. So, this is very interesting. So, this is the light I got, just a really standard night crew bar light. We'll get to this, but um, I didn't think the sponge filter, I got a sponge filter that was, this was the medium size. This is, okay, um, this is an Aquanite sponge filter, and um, I got the medium size. This does not look very large. Oh geez, it's tiny. Well, so I ordered this medium size sponge filter, um, corner spon sponge filter. Uh, it's pretty dang small, I will say. Um, I didn't think it would be this small. Yeah, I even bought the medium one, but that's okay. So this is the Uplip 2 that goes into here. Really simple, it's like a $5 filter. A lot smaller than I thought it would be, but now that I'm looking at it, it should work for this setup. And our light is just a one of those suction cup, like $10 Nikru lights and this is just, I figured I'm not growing any live plants in here, and if I do, they'll just be like some Anubias that I glue onto the rock structure for the background. So I didn't need anything fancy, and I figured this would be the easiest thing to have, and it would be the cheapest. So we got our light, and there's something stuck in the bottom. Looks like we got, all right, so this is very interesting. It's a USB light. Um, I had no idea this would be USB, and it does come with a power plug in here, which has this very nice, disgusting sheen on it, but it should work for this light. And it comes with two suction cups so that you can attach it to your tank. I have a glass lid, so I'm literally just going to have them like this, facing down, suctioned on the top of my tank. This is the 11-inch model. got it for like 11 bucks off Amazon. It should be completely submersible, although I won't need to use it for that. So let's just get straight into setting this tank up. So here's the tank a couple days later after rocking up the background. As you can see, the glass is pretty dirty, but you can see the background all nice and rocked up. The rocks that are in between will change into a darker hue when there's full of water. But as you can see, we got a light just suction cupped onto this glass lid. This is just a piece of one eighth inch thick glass you can get cut at any hardware store for like $2 got our shells we got carob sea aragonite sand so this can help raise our ph and we got a little sponge filter and our little plug-in pump of course there's more information on these products like this and the sand and shells in the one of my other vlogs and i'll have all the links to them in the description but just a little glance over them these shells are escargo shells the extra large size i got 24 pack off amazon 14 bucks or so uh, Carob Sea Aragonite got this also off Amazon, but drop shipped from Petco. And this was probably $8 shipped to me, and that's just a 10 pound bag. And then this is just a knockoff chrome co op USB nano air pump. And then, of course, we got our Night Crew suction cup LED, which the suction cups are actually really strong. Look at this, I can lift the lid with this. But without further ado, let's just get right into the scape. All right, so we got the tank empty here. Sorry that the glass is a bit dirty. I tried to clean it the best I could, but it has been sitting outside for a long time. I got the light in here just on the inside just so that you guys can have a look at it while I'm escaping it. It really won't be much, just gonna lay the sand across the bottom, but I'm gonna mix in some finer grain sand with the aragonite because the aragonite is really just 
help raise the pH. And these shellies, uh, the multis, they like a lot of sand, like a deep sand bed, about two inches at the least, so it's gonna come up to here. I'm gonna mix this in with other stuff because one of those finer sand beds, so it's easier for them to dig. And I'm not gonna wash it because even though I've heard you should wash aragonite, um, I just think if I fill it up slowly enough, that shouldn't be an issue. So I'm gonna go get my other sand and then we can just start mixing them and we can get the first sand bed in. So when I'm placing these rocks, the reason that I'm not going to use any really large ones is just I want to allow for maximum space for them to have real estate for their shells. Just because this is a 10 gallon, it's not a huge aquarium. I would like to upgrade them to a 20 long. Um, I mean, of course, they don't even have the fish yet, but after a while, oops, after a while, I would like to upgrade them to a 20 long just because they might be a little better size. This rock is not going to fit in there anyway. I just don't want to compromise any of their space. This is just basically my main thing, just trying to leave as much sand room as as possible for them to get their shells and so that they can have a good place to start spawning. All right, so as I said, 24 shells, and if I get a pack of six multis in here, that means that they each got four shells, so there shouldn't be any competition for them. There shouldn't be any lack of shells in here, and we got a nice deep sand bed, and I guarantee you that once we have the fish in here for longer than a week, if they settle in well, this tank will look nothing like it will now. There'll be big piles of sand wherever they want them to be. The shells will be moved around. It'll be really interesting for, them to, for me to watch them, but nice deep sand bed. Just a little rocky ledge right here coming down. Kind of looks like the drop off in Lake Tanganyika where they might be found. Of course, there's probably not basalt here, but um, this is the best that I can recreate it in a little 10 gallon aquarium using stuff that I mostly already had on hand. So pretty much all I gotta do now is add this sponge filter right here. Just tuck it into this corner because it's a corner filter and then run an airline tubing to it and probably put an air stone in there just to you know help with the bubble flow and then we can just fill this tank up so this is a really simple scape but i'm really excited for the fish this is really just to showcase the fish not the scape i'm refraining from adding any plants to here anything like that if i get a little ambitious i might add some anubias onto this like rock ledge right here but i know that in the wild they don't experience many plants i'll probably at least put some christmas moss just on these rocks here but i guess i'll stop talking let's get this thing filled up with water everyone so this is our 10 gallon shell dwellers breeding setup all ready to go so it's been running for about a month since i set it up um the sponge filter is starting to get cycled so what i've been doing to cycle this tank is i've been taking sponges from my other tanks like from the filters squeezing them out in here so that some beneficial ba beneficial bacteria can colonize you can even start to see some of this mold developing on the sponge filter, which is really nice. There's a ton of beneficial bacteria going in there. And I've got this Pearl Danio, 
which I can't get into focus, but he's just been living in here since I set the tank up, uh, starting to produce waste and getting a little bit of bio load in here for the benefit of bacteria to have. I'm putting a lot of, I'm putting fish food in here, feeding him, he's producing waste, and he's helping me cycle the tank. And so this tank has been going really well. The pH is starting to get to a stable 8.0, thanks to the aragonite and some of the shells that I've put in here. We'll talk about those later. And um, I do have this glass lid on here, which is just like a glass lid that I had for an old 10 gallon and just apparently fits here. I got that Nikru bar light right here, which is lighting this tank up really well, not too bright or anything, but I think it's just a really nice amount of light for this. The rock background I think is looking really good. I think it just really complements this whole scape right here. It's not really a scape, it's more like a breeding setup, but I think it looks really nice. Keeping the water at a consistent 75 or so degrees right now. Just right up there. It's actually the heater was unplugged. I forgot, so it's just around 70 right now. It's slowly heating up. But the uh, shell dwellers, the multifasciatus, they do like a bit warmer water around 76 to 81 degrees. So once I can actually buy them, then I'll probably heat this tank up. So it's just a matter of time until I can save up the $90 that I need to buy a pack of six online until I can get them shipped to here. So once I can earn $90, then um, I'll be able to actually get the fish for here. This tank is cycled. I've tested all the water quality. And so everything's good, going really well in here. I do have some floating plants in here. This is just Rickia. But there is some just like kind of random. I wasn't going to plant this tank up, but you know, I just added some stuff. There's some random Rickia just shoved in the rock gaps right there. It's a little bit of just random like plants just like scattered around here. I think it gives it a nice little natural look. Gives it a bit of greenery, even though I know that in Lake Tanganyika there really isn't that much greenery. But I just think, you know, kind of access the tank because it's, you know, it's not a biotope or anything. So I figured it'd be okay. And sponge filter wise, again, running off this little knockoff air pump. Still super quiet after a month. Here, listen to it. You literally can't hear it. All you can hear is the bubbles. And I did install an air stone in this sponge filter. I was gonna film that, but I didn't know if it was actually gonna work. But you can see the bubble pattern's much finer. And that's because I installed the air stone that came with this um, sponge filter. No, it came with this, this pump into the sponge filter. And it worked out really well. It doesn't make that glugging noise. It's a lot quieter, and even though I sleep, like, right there, it's not super annoying, and I can, you know, just fall asleep, even though it's a little bit loud, but, I mean, it's really not too bad, and, I mean, I've been sleeping next to it for a month or so, so it's totally fine. So this is my Lake Tanganyikan Neolamprologus Multifasciatus tank. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. I know it's not crazy, eventually, I, if once I get these fish and they're breeding, maybe I'll do a 20 long for them, but they will be totally fine in a 10-gallon so within as long however long it takes me to save up the money to buy them we'll have the fish in here so uh stay tuned for that see you guys next time thanks for watching